Muchachos y muchachas, is the machine scared? Recently, there were some Horizon new information coming from the Durham investigation, and it made quite a splash, at least within those groups that have been knowing what's been going on, even ever since the inception of the Durham investigation that was set off in 2019. Now, this investigation has been on tight lock. Keep that in mind. There have been no leaks. It has been under wraps. And like I said before, you know, there were just a lot of questionable moves that Trump made on his way out of the White House, if you guys catch my drift there, um, including, you know, completely separate from what we're going to uh, cover today. But he made some amendments to some executive orders days out of coming out of office that I still hold in the back of my mind, as well as making the move to classify uh, Durham's investigation as uh, some form of counsel uh, rather than something that the new administration can touch. And that seems to be effective because here we are today looking at some new information and the latest uh, claim has been that uh, the Clinton campaign, in fact, uh, paid a certain entity to infiltrate the Trump Tower to gather information and data mine on uh, some possible connections to uh, Trump and Alpha Bank, which is uh, closely tied to the Kremlin, in which uh, there weren't a lot of strong claims. We'll just say that there was a weak link uh, that they decided to go with, and that's what birthed the entire Russia collusion narrative. Now, as you guys remember, the mainstream media a couple years ago were all about the Russian collusion narrative. They could not stop talking about it. They uh, all gaslit their watchers, their viewers, to believe this claim, uh, even to the point where some of them even lied on air. Uh, for instance, uh, What's her name? Joy Belhar on The View. Anyway, there's a lot. There's a lot of examples in, in that respect. But now that this new information has come out, we haven't seen any mainstream coverage as far as, you know, all of the main networks besides Fox News. Um, and that is what Hillary Clinton today is coming out against. They're saying that Trump and Fox News are spinning up this false narrative. And uh, she also strung in Vanity Fair somehow, or rather maybe Vanity Fair decided to cover for her. And this is one of the first pieces that were put out in regards to her response to these claims. Stay right there. We're going to go through it. Friends, we live in a world that's slipping away into constant uncertainty and danger. Imagine if something unthinkable happens tomorrow within hours global supply chains can break down and never start up again. We've learned that lesson the hard way. And that means the smart thing to do is to prepare for the worst, even if the peanut butter hasn't hit the fan yet. You should store emergency food that can get you through whatever happens next. And we highly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's largest emergency preparedness company. Act now and save $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kits, which contains an abundance of delicious food that provides over 2,000 calories a day. Every person in your family should have at least one of these. Your shipment will arrive quickly in unmarked boxes. Go to preparewithnatley.com and save $50 on each four-week supply food kit you purchase. That's preparewithnatley.com to avoid being a victim and survive the coming uncertainty. Preparewithnatley.com. All right. So Miss Hillary Clinton put out a tweet today debunking, in essence, the claims that uh, Durham and the Trump team are putting out. Here you can see uh, Hillary Clinton t tweeting this out. Trump and Fox are desperately spinning up a fake scandal to distract from his real ones. So it's a day that ends in why. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the why means. Uh, the more his misdeeds are exposed, the more they lie. For those interested in reality, here's a good debunking of their latest nonsense. And this is her 
alluding to the debunking, a Vanity Fair article. That's right, a Vanity Fair article. So somebody over at Vanity Fair decided to uh, front and uh, become the face of this debunking. And okay, fine, if that's what you're wa- you're wanting to do. But I just find this very comical and amusing because of the way that they're trying to debunk this, which wasn't a hard debunk. It was the fact that they extrapolated certain components of these claims. And really, uh, they are trying to uh, turn away a lot of a lot of these people who are now looking to, into the Durham probe. They're trying to uh, turn people to uh, believe that this is all spun up and a lie. Listen to how Vanity Fair is trying to debunk the Durham probe. It says, imagine, if you will, that special counsel appointed by the federal government declared in a court filing that he had evidence, excuse me, that a major political figure, let's call her HRC, you guys know, Evergreen, had paid spies to infiltrate the White House and run surveillance on DJT, the president, sitting president at the time, in order to frame him As a foreign asset, is that not what you guys did for the past couple years? Did the, what was the, gosh, I forget the the name of that, that finding. Um, Anyway, it was a report basically debunking the whole Russian collusion narrative. It starts with an M. The guy, the guy who did this, his name starts with an M. Anyway. He came out and basically uh, d- debunked all that uh, in a report, and that's what really destroyed their entire narrative. So essentially, yes, it was a joint effort by the mainstream media to discredit Trump in this fake, strung up uh, hoax uh, that they that they created, and they did this for years. You guys remember? So it's funny that Vanity Fair is kind of phrasing it this way they're framing it as if oh you know uh they're try they were trying to frame him as a foreign asset they were they were trying to do this continues the whole thing would be a big flipping deal one for which there would be major major consequences and far-reaching fallout the country nay the world would be gripped by the story and for a good reason a former candidate for office spying on the president in the white house that would be crazy Indeed, Vanity Fair author, it is crazy. And that is actually what we're suspecting that happened because a lot more amounts to uh, concrete and corroborative evidence, which I will talk about corroboration and probably why Fox News utilized the term infiltration um, in order to title their headlines. One for which, she says, would be a major, major consequences. Uh, The country, the world would be gripped by the story for a good reason. Continued on. And you're right. It would be crazy if something like that actually happened, which it didn't. Oh, so Vanity Fair, you're going to put yourselves on the front line to say that it didn't. Remember, you know, people uh, by the likes of, I believe, Huffington Post or was it the the Huffington Post? I think it was the Huffington Post or the Washington Post. I think it was the Washington Post, actually. They actually had to retract and or or correct their story because they had uh, put out a headline that definitively, they said they definitively knew that Trump was connected to the Russian agents and they had to retract at, at one point. So they say here, which it didn't, I'm going to say, and I'm just going to call it right now, that this is probably going to have to be a retracted statement or story at one point or a correction, because this is a pretty far reach to go out and definitively say that it didn't happen. Because, again, there haven't been any leaks in the Durham probe thus far. We've been impatiently waiting. And I say impatiently as a group setting. You know, I know a lot of people have developed this uh, turn of events as, you know, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's happening. Well, in fact, it was happening. The Durham probe was just on tight lock and we want that to be on tight lock. We don't want any leaks because if the information he is uncovering is indeed incriminating, why would we want the people, the, the, um, per- well, what's the right word? Perpetrators. Why would we want them to know that information? So that way they would know ahead of time how to spin the stories. So, Vanity Fair, quite bold. You guys have a lot of cojones um, stating that it didn't happen. So 
Vanity Fair, and by the way, this story is archived, so we have a, the version already unlocked. So Vanity Fair, I mean, you, you got the balls to put this out, then I'm just going to I'm just going to continue on. So Vanity Fair claims it didn't happen. Fortunately, unfortunately for reason, logic and concept of the truth, Donald Trump, Fox News and various other deranged conservatives cannot be convinced of that. Yeah. And and le- actually, I didn't cover the title. Let me let me just go back to the title here. Listen to this. It says you'll never believe it. But Hillary Clinton did not, in fact, spy on Trump's White House. That's right. Vanity Fair. We don't believe it. All right, let's continue on. It says, yes, as you've probably heard on this on Saturday, the former president released a statement claiming special counsel Robert Durham. He meant to say John Durham. Good correction, the good catch there. But it was apparently too angry to keep his Johns and his Roberts straight and had uncovered his indisputable evidence that my campaign and presidency are lied on, are spied on by operatives paid by HRC Evergreen campaign in an effort to develop a completely fabricated connection to Russia, a scandal far greater in scope and magnitude than Watergate, he says. For which Trump, Vanity Fair then chimes in, suggested that those involved should be yeah, there, there's a certain extent to uh, a crime that is punishable by a very, um, let's just say, a very extreme measure. And there are crimes that, you know, yeah, I mean, if if you're a bad actor, I'm just saying, but I'm not going to say the word for the for the purpose of this platform. But that's what Trump claimed, that there's certain crimes that are punishable by, you know. The problem, neither Robert Durham nor John Durham, nor anyone else for that matter, had actually provided evidence. Now, Vanity Fair, darling, sweetheart, the reason why they haven't provided the evidence yet, and we say yet, is because it's been on tight lock. There have been no leaks, right? Anybody can anybody can say that. There have been no leaks up to this point. John Durham has been very tactful in the way he's been probing this investigation, the way that he has been uh, ongoing in his discovery. So even to the fact, uh, here, here's here's a, a, an example of this. So when we were going through the motions uh, earlier last year, when we first heard about Durham and his indictment on Michael Sussman, I finally got that name right, on Michael Sussman, Michael Sussman's lawyers, his representation were basically like, oh yeah, John Durham, well, what evidence do you have? We want to see the evidence. And John Durham was basically like, okay, here's 81,000 pages of documentation, what part? And so Mark, uh, Michael Suss, oops, I did it again. Michael Sussman's representation were basically like, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to see, okay, okay, we, hold on, hold on. You know what I mean? So, so there is some form of behavior that has been very telling in this if you have the eyes to see it and so you know there might not be quite yet concrete information that has been released by the john durham investigation yet but again i will say that it's very ballsy of vanity fair to say that there hasn't been any provided evidence interesting so continued on, uh, they quote something from the New York Times, and uh, it's basically on the investigation. According to the filing, Sussman had gotten his information from technology executive Rodney Joff, whose company, Newstar, had performed server-related work for the White House. In Durham's estimation, Joff and his colleagues had exploited his arrangement by mining certain records for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Donald Trump. This is uh, what the claim is. Now, Fox News took this headline, says Vanity Fair, from Durham's filing and ran with it, claiming that Durham had said uh, he was uh, found that the Clinton campaign had paid the technology company to infiltrate the White House servers. Now, let's go back to that line that's highlighted here. So in John Durham's estimation, Joff and his colleagues had exploited this arrangement by mining certain records for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Trump. Now, let's just put something in perspective here. Vanity Fair isn't necessarily debunking John Durham's statement. Put that in perspective. They are not debunking John Durham's statement. Okay, they're actually trying to twist the statement and saying Fox News took this statement 
and formed a headline that was completely different. Now, let's just take the statement again, because Vanity Fair, again, isn't debunking the statement. They're actually citing it. John Durham says uh, that Joff, who is a technology executive and his colleagues, the technology company, had exploited this arrangement by mining certain records for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Trump. Now, exploitation, what does that mean? Exploited means that you are um, actually uh, using, they're kind of grifting a situation or a person in order to get something out of it. So they exploited this arrangement by mining. So data mining means that you're, you're extracting data, you're extracting information, and basically, what this is is that you know the claim by Durham is that they took this information, they tried to find a weak link within this information to point Trump to Alpha Bank. So it says, exploit this arrangement by mining certain records for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Trump. So again, not wrong. You know, uh, in in a way, in essence, we can say that they infiltrated the servers, they infiltrated the situation. You know, because if you're going to exploit information, which Vanity Fair never debunked the statement from John Durham, let's let's keep that in mind. If they are exploiting the fact that they were in position to view data within Trump's servers, then and data mine, then in essence, it is a form of infiltration, you know, and we'll continue on. Uh, Fox News took uh, took this line from Durham's filing and ran with it, claiming Durham had said he found the Clinton campaign and paid technology in, uh, company to infiltrate the White House server, servers. The lack of similarly baseless claims from the mainstream media led Trump to declare the press refuses to even mention the major crime that took place. This in itself is a scandal. The fact that the story is so big, so powerful and so important for the future for our nation is to getting zero uh, coverage by the lamestream media, says Donald Trump, is by uh, is top being talked about all over the world. So this is what Vanity uh, Fair is trying to do. They're trying to um, give reason why this isn't being covered by the mainstream media. They're saying, number one, Sussman's conversation with the CIA had already been reported last October. Number two, Durham has never once said anything about the White House being infiltrated. So again, again, we, we just had this conversation, right? We just had this conversation. Although Durham didn't use the word infiltrated, he used the word exploited. They exploited this entire situation. They exploited the fact that this technology company was in position to view data. They data mined it. And somehow Durham is try- tying this back to uh, HRC Evergreen and her campaign and her colleagues. Um to to actually gain some sort of, you know, uh, visible evidence, you know, what they claimed as evidence that Trump was indeed tied to the Kremlin, which, again, this uh, this was debunked in that report when Trump was in office. So the spe- number three, they say the special counsel also never claimed that HRC Evergreen had paid Joff's company. And number four, perhaps most importantly, the filing never said that the White House data had come under scrutiny was from the Trump era. In fact, lawyers for the data scientists also helped develop data analysis and questions say this happened during Barack Obama's presidency. <clears throat> Now, get this. What Trump and some news outlets are saying says Vanity Fair is wrong. I'm sorry, says uh, this is what Vanity Fair is utilizing for their leverage. They're, they talk to attorneys Jody Westby and Mark Rash. Now, we don't know who these attorneys are, right? They just name attorneys. We don't know if they're representing anybody within this probe or if they're tied to Sussman at all. But this is what these attorneys are saying. What Trump and some news outlets are saying is wrong, says the attorneys. Jody and Mark, they told the New York Times, the cybersecurity researchers were investigating malware in the White House, not spying on Trump campaign. And to our knowledge, all of the data they used was non-private DNS data from before Trump took office. Now continued on. This is what Vanity Fair continues to, to portray. In other words, Vanity Fair says Trump and company got the whole thing hilariously, mortifyingly incorrect. It, is it really that funny? Is it really that funny that some some entity can data mine on a president and especially that he was sitting in office as Durham claims, right? And this is the ending statement they decide to go with. But fear not. It's Vanity Fair. They think that they're going to pressure Trump into doing this. Listen to this. But fear not, says Vanity Fair. 
We're sure they're going to issue a lengthy correction and heartfelt apology to the people whose reputations they impunged, impugned, punched, impugned, and the ones that Trump suggested should be put to the extreme criminalized punishment in no time. They're saying we're sure the Trump camp and all of these people are going to apologize. Fear not. Interesting. I just thought that that part was hilarious. I thought that this was a very interesting spin on things and that Vanity Fair actually had the cojones to uh, front for HRC Evergreen. <laughs> it's it's actually it sounds a little desperate to me and it sounds a bit childish and juvenile. And um, the only thing I say, like I always do, is that we truly don't know what the heck is going on. And for that fact, we've got to wait. And same with the Durham investigation. People for a long time said nothing was going to come out of it, that it wasn't happening, that nothing was going to uh, be discovered. And here we are sitting in 2022 with some new information. So with that being said, just wait. All right, guys, give me your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing. Hey, tell somebody about this channel. Um, be sure to drop it in your group chats, whether it's in Telegram, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you have them. I really appreciate your orga organic support here. Uh, so anyway, guys, like the video, share, subscribe. I will talk to you guys in the next one.